It, uh, I didn't know whether to put on my skate to skate to church or use the car. <laughs> but there's places that were salted, and I mean, that's why those from outside would have a hard time getting in because it would be dangerous if it's not salted, so the roads. But nevertheless, we're here. Yeah. We're to worship and praise the Lord. Let's just stand this morning. And Brother John, Brother still in the hospital. We remember him as well, and maybe other requests this morning. Can we pray for my husband? He fell on the, on the ice and he broke Who's this? Lord, my husband. Your husband fell on the ice? And he had to have an operation. An operation on the shoulder. shoulder. Yeah, because it can be dangerous. I mean, I mean, we see ice up here all the time, but sometimes we get complacent and it just takes a moment. And yeah. That's it. Second. Yeah. All right. And for your mother and Abby? Yes, uh, my mother... Uh, took uh, another heart attack. Uh, she's doing all right now, so uh, she's in the hospital right now. And also, uh, stepfather, he's uh, he's going down him a little bit because he's got bone cancer, so. And uh, well, the only way that things can change is if God does a miracle there, so. There's all kinds of needs, yes. and surely, Miracles would be wonderful, Lord. But we can't make God do anything that He don't want. We can pray. Prayer is asking. It's not demanding. And so when He says yes, then you can say, you are healed. And if He says no, then we just pray and leave it with the Lord. So let's just pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before Thee, Lord, we so thankful, Lord, that we can come before Thee. We thank the Lord that we can Lord, fellowship, Lord, in the country, in the place, Lord, where we will have peace. And Lord, remember thy nation, Israel, Lord, is under pressure this hour. And I thank the Lord for all the things that you're doing. I commit the service in your hands in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Number twenty five in the blue book. G, number 25 in the book. book. Shackled by a
the window? Do you have a song? saying that one. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> just want it. Just want it. Just want. I'll try G. Okay. Just want to tell you I'm thankful.
Just want to tell you I'm thankful for all that you have done for the stars and the moonlight and the setting sun when my Just want to tell you I'm thankful for all that you have done for the stars and the moonlight and the setting sun when my work on earth is true. The God of this evil age has blinded the minds today of people who want their own way according to God's own word. Oh, denying the things he's done of sending his only son, accepting the creeds of men, rejecting the word of God. Oh, this is the even time, it's greater than you think. The boy is preparing now oh, for the war to me. All oh, things are ready now, so come by on me. Darkness throughout the wind This world just can't understand A prophet I want this friend Proclaiming the way to God If you would be saved today Follow the words he gave. Oh, accept in the word of God, for this is the even time. Oh, this is the even time. It's greater than you think. me. Oh, all things are ready now, so come by on me. Oh, even as in year to year, the even time is near. Oh, the God of the sea.
as mine yet the mines today a people walk their own way according to God's own word oh denying the things he's done a saying his own son oh accepting the grace of man rejecting the word of God oh this is the even time it's where you're there There is no hiding. <laughs> he knows where we're at. I'm a pilgrim on a journey headed for a bed. The way it's rough, the trials so hard to understand. 
I call the one who started with me Said he'd be there till the end And when I need a strength He blesses me again And it's so hard to comprehend He takes the I'm just a small, small grain of sand In the wonders of His hands And now He blesses me He blesses me again I've not always been the best man Sometimes I've given in oh, But the Lord is great in mercy In the moment I repent I find He blesses me He blesses me again And it's so I'm just a small, small grain of sand In the wonders of His hands Now He blesses me He blesses me again And it's so hard to comprehend He takes the I'm just a small, small grain of sand In the wonders of His hands of love He blesses me, He blesses me again Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let's just stand with the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, as we come to this part of this service, Lord, we approach thy throne of grace, Lord, that you use this vessel of clay as you would see fit, Lord. I just ask this morning, Lord, that you'd have your way. And Lord, bless those that couldn't be here, Lord, even those by the way of the internet. Now, Lord, we commit this part of the service in your hands. In that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Can we see it this morning?
like we mentioned last week, we can see that we're living in the last decade or around the, la around the last decade of time. And so, but in the, in the things that are taking place that you and I are to see and all the things taking place, there's certain things I want to look at this morning um, in how to look at, you can say it's maybe your own personal view, that's, that's fine. But we're going to look at something this morning, just a, a little brief thought. But before I get into my thought this morning, Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, more or less gave a scathing remark to the UN. He says, it's about time, now concerning the US, he says, it's about time us, the US, recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. And they have done that. And that has some, set some things in motion. It has set a lot of hatred on part of the Palestinians because they over the years, they said they want to negotiate, but every time they bring into a negotiation, they put in a new requirement, and really, in the end result, they never wanted to negotiate. The only negotiate they have on their mind is, get rid of the Jews, we want all the land, and we want Jerusalem. And so, that's in their mindset, because it's not just on the political side of view, it's on the religious side of view. They're Muslim, they want the Mosque of Omer to be the thing for the, the, that land. But we know according to God's word that precedes any Palestinians that God of Israel is going to have Jerusalem as his capital. And when I heard on the news that our Prime Minister abstained from recognizing Israel as their capital, I have to say shame on the Prime Minister. If you're a Christian, Obviously, you don't read your Bible, or unless you just want to compromise for some gains that you want to trade with the Arab nations. But it's time, we're living in an hour where man has to start standing on some principles. Uh, Netanyahu says, also said that the UN, the United Nations, is a house of lies. They condemn everything that Israel does, but let the Palestinians murder, kill, or do whatever they, they want to, they won't say a thing. Look at Iran, Iraq, uh, or the different, or even Syria. You hardly hear, hear the UN condemning anything there, but Israel, first and foremost, bingo. While UN, I got news for you. The God of heaven is looking at you, and your time's about up. Things are not gonna go your way in the not too distant future. If this Bible is God's word, then it is God's word and it ain't gonna change. So they have to change. So Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, the nation, UN nation is a house of lies. While Jerusalem will remain the capital despite any UN decisions to the contrary. In other words, he's determined there's just no way because the Jews recognize that there is their hour, that Jerusalem needs to be there, and they know in the background that they need to take all that land because they're waiting for the Messiah. They may not know who the Messiah is, but we do, us Gentiles, because it has been revealed to us because the Jews did not accept the New Testament because there's things in the New Testament that would have definitely helped them see their hour that they're living in. But they've been blinded. God, if God blinded them, they're blinded till the time, the week of Daniel, which is some 10 years away from now, that's probably start to unfold. Now I say 10 years, don't put 10 years, about. Because there's people that are ready to, to jump on, he said 10 years. All right. He says, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel whether the UN recognizes it or not. He has a deed, it's called the Bible, or in the scrolls in the Old Testament. Netanyahu stressed, saying that while it took 70 years for the US to officially recognize it, and it'll take more years for until UN also recognize it, 
Well, I don't, Benjamin Netanyahu, that may not take another seven years for UN to recognize it. Because when the miracle war takes place, UN will have to see what God has done for Israel. You can't hide behind education and these professors of know-it-all and what should be and what shouldn't be. God's above them all. And God says, Israel's going to have her land and he's going to put her in her land. So praise the Lord. On the other hand, Abbas says Jerusalem is the capital concerning Israel, uh, Jerusalem being the capital of Israel. Oh no, I got the wrong place here. I must have copied the wrong. But he says uh, that Jerusalem is the, supposed to be the capital of the Palestinians. Where they're saying now East Jerusalem, but actually they want all of Jerusalem. And really, when you come to think of it, because the, for 30, 25, 30 years, as the U.S. and U.N. tried to get Israel and the Palestinians to have agreed to make a two-state solution, which we know both parties don't want it to begin with. I mean, the light should go on. It's religious. It's never, they're never going to give it up. Somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. And so, therefore, I believe God is heating up the process. And when Jerusalem become a trembling stone, it becomes now more hotter than ever. Even the president of Turkey says that he wants to move his embassy now to East Jerusalem to support the Palestinians. Well, I have to say, Mr. President of Turkey, you're biting on the wrong side of things. He's a Muslim, of course. He do, they only see what, what's in the Koran, but the Koran is not God's word. It's just a man that wrote some things that took uh, way back in the year 700 or so when Muhammad wrote down the things that they claim to be the word of God. But anyway, the Jewish word goes much, much way, way further back than that. So, anyway, that's what's happening on the on the news front now. Um, so, in the in the days to come, there's going to be more pressure because the Palestinians wants to do everything they can to to get at the Jews to try to turn this around. But the more they push that way, because I believe the time is now, God is going to snap somebody's fingers. And if, we're, if we believe in the time frame that we're living in, here in the next three years, it could be even in 2018, but somewhere there's a space of time God has allowed yet before we reach that miraculous war, whether it's next year or in three years. But it can't go beyond that much further than that because then there won't be enough time to fulfill the three things concerning the miracle war, the building of the temple, and the Ezekiel war and also the time frame for the bride to come and hear her, th her thunders. And she has to prophesy to the tongues and nations and so forth to begin with. So praise the Lord. So we are living at that time frame. There's two, two things that now some can say on the, they may be saying in their sermon, well, we don't see that, you can't set dates. Well, I have to say, if you can't see that the Gentile church age is the two days of Hosea, then I have to say, you're heading down the wrong road. Somewhere you have to see something. And you can't always go relying on what Brother Branham said and what Brother Jackson said for this hour. They said wonderful things and they brought us up to this hour. But in this hour, if we're living near the end, it's not to be all surprised. It's all happening now. No, God said he, we would know the season, not the day or the hour. And in what we're looking at now, it could be a, a shift of three, four years, depending on when the Gentile church age has started. But I want to look at starting in, if you want to turn to the book of Revelation this morning, In chapter 11, I'm going to look at a certain thought here this morning. It's up there. Can you all see it from there? If there's not, there's plenty of seats up the front here. So praise the Lord. The scripture that I'm looking at 
It's concerning the middle of the week. Right here in the middle of the week. Revelation chapter 11, from verse 6 on down to where I'm going to focus on is verse 9. We know that God's going to send two prophets to prophesy to the nation of Israel. And while I'm in that area, there's a church in the States that's saying that it's going to be the two Jew prophets that's going to prophesy the tongues of the nation and so forth. That's an error. The two prophets are only dedicated for the nation of Israel, not for the nations and peoples and tongues and so forth. They've gone into error and a whole lot of other things. I mean, I stopped counting after 2011 when they reached about 18 things that they went off track. That's not in agreement with what God did bring. So, But you can't tell them. You can't shake them. God has to do the waking. And if we're children of God and we're sincere, we will look at it in the right way. But now getting back to this place here, so after the two prophets have prophesied in the land for that first three and a half years, we know that at the, he warns the 144,000 and the woman to flee, and the 144,000 will go to the nations from whence they come from, and the woman is to flee to America. But when it comes to arrive to the middle of the week, the two prophets do not flee. The Antichrist gets a hold of them and kills them and let their bo dead bodies lie in the street for three and a half days. But then it goes on to say, and here's the thought I want to concentrate on this morning, because we'll use this as a springboard as we're going to look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 32 to 36. And I'll read it now. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is Jerusalem, of course, which is spiritually called Sodom and uh, Sodom and of Egypt, where the, our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Now we read that, and yes, we know the event, but really when we look at it a little deeper, when it says the, uh, the hunt kindreds, tongues, nations, people from other countries shall see their dead bodies. When it says they shall see it, I believe, and when I looked at it in the, in the official meaning, it means they actually observe. But the whole thing is, we look at that and we, yes, it can be when the event actually takes place, the media cameras are on the situation, and you could be awake at that time of day and you actually see the event. All right? But not everybody can fit, not all the tongues and nations are going to be there to, to, to pile into Israel to watch this event right in Jerusalem. But the scripture says the people will see it. And I want to put it in this context. They're not going to read about it. They're not going to hear about it on the radio. They're going to see it with their eyes. Now, if the nations of the world is going to see it, that means everybody around the globe, which is 24 hours difference than, than Israel at the furthest point, in order to see it, they'd have to be, everybody have to be awake and watching it at that time. But seeing the event as it's recorded, you can get up the next day and see it live, although it transpired the day before or the week before depending when you're going to view it. But the seeing is doesn't mean you have to be there the moment the actual event takes place, within the second and the moment and the minute it happens. 
But seeing me, it, that generation or the people that are there have access to actually see it, not just hear about it, not just seeing it being written somewhere so they write, read, it, read it in a newspaper. Otherwise, it would have, the word would have been put a little different. Okay? Now, I believe you can understand what I'm trying to say this morning. Yes, it will be live. Yes, it will, the event will actually take place. But because of modern technology, men can see it on the moment it happens or later on. You can't see it before. You can't look into to the future to that event. But you can definitely see it after. Now, that being said, when Jesus, when the... Uh, when John wrote these words, they said it was told that people would see it. First of all, there had to be the means for people to see it. And that foreseeing and what we're talking about this event here could only happen in this last generation. Television was invented in 1927. Yes, you can, there were some crude things, but as far as I, the science is concerned, 27 was the first working model, but it was not used for broadcasting. That's how they, it actually took place, that somebody could actually have a camera and you view it on a, on a screen. But it was not till 1947 to 1953, there were some television where a nation like, like the U.S. and probably Canada had access to the first crude TVs, and they didn't broadcast across the country and the world. Uh, by 1947, and I was surprised to see how old that, that show, because I remember when I was young, the first show that they put on there as a comedy was Howdy Doody. You that are in your 70s, you know what I'm talking about. You that are much younger, you have no clue. It was like a puppet thing. And, and so this was one of the first programs that was put on in 1947. And so there was only, it talks about there was only in the small numbers of thousand people that had television that could see it in 47. But by 1953, then the news media took on that there was cameras, being, now becomes countrywide, or nations that are start to instill, instill, not instill, instill systems that they can have TV, uh, Europe, of course, and places like that, not Africa, and, but the rich nation that would have access and the means to do it. By 1953-54, television was on the scene, and for you that never seen it, it was all black and white. And we were, I remember I was living in Toronto at the time in 1954. My father had bought a TV then. And uh, we, I remember watching it because that's where I saw Howdy Doody. And being, the television being displayed, it was black and white. And we thought, wow, this is really something. It was really something that because from before, you can only hear things on the radio. You couldn't see what's transpiring. You can only believe the words that was being said. But now you could picture. Because they, it was not only that Howdy Doody show, but they had the news on as well. So this started to take off. And so by the time you reached uh, 1955, 54, 55, then there came color television. I didn't see my first te colored television until 1960. We were living here in the Moncton area or in Dieppe, and we all had an old black and white, and you know we thought that was great. Then a friend of mine asked me to we were, to come over, and of course they had a colored television, and when I seen it, wow, you're in color. Then you know how kids are, Dad, you need to get a color TV. <laughs> Uh, today is you need a, a bigger tablet or a phone that does all kinds of things. It's got so bad the technology had advanced so much. I was like I was telling to one of the brothers. On TV, is on TV there was a commercial after the news, and there's this little kid playing on, on the ground and he has something like a phone or a tablet, and he's playing away, and so his mother comes out and says, 
Now it's time to come in. He says, why don't you go play on, your, play on the computer? And the old fellow looks up and his mother says, what's a computer? Yeah. Huh? So that shows how old we are getting. It's true, things are moving that way. Right. But what, with the advance of technology, there's a drawback. The attention span is much smaller. We want something instant, right away. If it can't entertain me right away, I'm moving on. Well, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is not something right away in, in that manner. God comes when he wants and moves on, on, you, on, the, on the people as he wish. Now, knowing that television was now on the scene, whatever would be recorded, you could see something live later on. So when the scripture talks about that in the one that we just read it in the Re- book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 9, they shall see, that don't necessarily apply, you have to see it in Jerusalem or be in Jerusalem and see it with your physical eyes. Because it's impossible for a nation and everything else. So, so therefore, we must understand what is the meaning by that scripture. Now, as we have that in our minds, let's now turn to Matthew chapter 24. We're going to go into some things here this morning that... Oh, here, i got it here for you anyway. So there again, when it says see, it's not talking about hearing or something you read, something visual. Now in Matthew 24, it talks about here, Now learn of the fig tree, when its branch is yet tender. When you look at that first part, the branch is yet tender. It's not talking about when it's a bud that's grafted in. Because a branch, a little bud on the end of a tree doesn't constitute a branch, does it? But Israel, when it was grafted in, was in 1948. But really, when you look at this, the wording of it, He says, when the branch is yet tender, it has to be brought far enough that leaves can grow on it. Leaves don't grow on the little bud on the the fig tree. All right, so it's not really pointing to you to 1948, but it's going to be pointing to you and I in 1967. So, So when we look at that parable, now I can see more and more it is pointing When what Jesus is talking about other things following in the verses is pointing from 1967. Yes, it is important, 1948, Israel did become a nation. And I was one year old when it became a nation. I didn't see it. How many one year old can know history and read and see television and decipher things? You can't, right? All right, I'm just going to leave that there. So he says here, And when they get tender and puts forth leaves, you know summer is nigh. Now if he's talking about season, he's moved from the spring season, when the, probably the bud is, that's 1948, and now the branch is going forth, and starts to put leaves, it means there's a process of time has transpired, not the next day or the next year. Now he's using that as a parable. The fig tree, we know it's Israel. So it would take time for Israel to start branch, that branch to grow, which first started in 48. And then as over time, it would start to add people gradually till a point that it would be fulfilling the words of Jesus that now it is starting to put forth leaves. It didn't say had all the leaves, it's putting forth leaves. So somewhere it's not at the week of Daniel, and it's not at the miracle war, but it's somewhere between there and 1948. And being scriptural, and on top of that, not only just being scriptural, because in 1967, Israel got more land and the city of Jerusalem. So 
Most things that God, that's related in God's Word relates to a spiritual, revelatory Word of the time. So that's why I believe in my heart that 1967 is the time when the leaves were starting to be put on to, into the land. All right. You know that summer is nigh. In other words, it's close. Now we're going to be looking... Okay, I'm better not jump ahead. So likewise, when ye shall see these things, you know it is near, even at the door. Now when Jesus is speaking about the generation, or he says it's near at the door, he's talking about those that would see these things. He's talking about the bride now. The doors is not... Here at the physical second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The doors is when we go up in the rapture and God turns to the Jews. The Gentile door closes. The Jew, now God deals, revelates to the Jews. So that's the door. So that's why he's, he's pointing to the doors here. But he says, And so likewise when you shall see, see these things, what things? See the fig tree. See, it put forth a branch. It's even at the doors. Now, if we go from 1948 to 1967 now, and I'll use myself as an example. I was one year old in 1948. We didn't have a TV. I didn't see Israel become a nation in one day. But yet in 1948, videos was recorded of the event. And even when I came of age in the 57 or, or, or that area of time where, where a young person starts to understand, has enough reason that you can understand things. I didn't see it then. I didn't see Israel become, take Jerusalem or the Six Day War. I sort of seen it on TV, but it meant nothing to me. I wasn't even saved. But 1974, when I became saved, when Jesus says, the, this generation, or they sh you shall see these things, that does not exclude me from seeing Israel becoming a nation in one day. I didn't see it in 48, but I saw it in 74. You follow my drift? In 1967, when they, they took Jerusalem and took more land, yes, there was things taking place around that time, because we just had the uh, Kennedy assassination, we had the uh, also, the war that almost took place in, in 1962 with Kennedy and the, the Russians, that was more of the focal thing because if you're not saved, you were wondering if you're going to live or not, whether the Russians was coming over with missiles, with, nu with nukes. And the Americans, I remember when it came on the Bay of Pits, when, they, when it came to stop those ships, those B-52 bombers that's up in the north, northern part of the Maine, right across our province, they were flying overhead. You don't have to be spiritual or anything else. If you knew anything about the news, here's a bunch of bombers flying towards the north, flying over the pole to go at Russia. They were two minutes from the point of no return. They weren't carrying just little cannons and regular bombs. They were carrying nukes. And so therefore, the whole world was frightened at that moment of time. It came to about, the clock almost came to midnight, so till when it settled down, it backed off time-wise. So all I'm saying is, when you see, now it's not talking about the, the war I'm looking at. So Israel being a nation in one day, I saw it, but I was, yes, I was born, but I only saw it later. So I could see it with my physical eyes. Just as I mentioned about in Revelation chapter 11, verse 9. All right? So now,
as Israel is becoming, as we have now looked at it to the point of 1967, a lot of you that are young was not born in 1948, and some of you were not born in 1967. But if you're part of the bride, you will, if God has called you to be the bride, it's not just basic salvation, you're going to start to see some of the things these are interested in. And you can pick up and they still have it on, on record or you can go on YouTube or, you, or wherever it is and you can see these events. So you can see it with your eyes. So when Jesus is talking about here, so likewise when ye shall see all these things, doesn't mean you had to be there in the day and the moment it took place. But you're in that generation and the means for you and I to see it was on ground. That uh, helps a whole lot. All right. Now it says, you know all these things and you know it is near even at the doors. To you and I, when we look at the doors, now some would say, well, Brother Jackson never mentioned about the doors. I know, but it wasn't time for it. But to you and I, it is important. Because now he's talking about, when he's talking relating to the doors, he's speaking about the bride part. But then in verse 34, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. Now those that would see via television the live event of Israel becoming a nation, Jerusalem being, being taken, all these things, and he's talking about all these things because he's been talking about the coming of the Lord, will live long enough to see the Lord's second coming. But those that's going to see the Lord's second coming, it's not bride. That's the same people in your generation that's looking up to, up to the doors is the same generation that is either heathen, godly, or tares, or whatever case may be. They will live long enough to see the actual coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's two thoughts involved in that parable. Does that make sense? Because when you look at it and you clump everything together, well, is the bride going to be, uh, going to be here till uh, the physical second coming? No. All right. Now, in other parables, and I'll put that up too, that's in Matthew. Now, in Mark, he says here, Now learn of the parable of the fig tree when her branch, not her bud, that's in the, in the tree... Yet it's tender, and it's tender at the point where it's putting forth leaves. That's not pointing to 48. That's pointing to 1967. You know, summer is near. So in a light manner, when ye see these things. If I only was a Christian in 1980... Oh, I wasn't there to see 1967. I didn't see 19, uh, 1948. But you can via the media of television, the news. When you see these things come to pass, know that it is not even at the doors. That is pointing to now the element that is the bride. Because when, when we're pointing to the door, we're talking about the rapture. Because the doors is the Jewish door and the Gentile door. The Gentile door closed and the Jewish door will open. Verily I say to you, this generation, now the people that is among the bride of that generation, they can see things also. It may be an interest of a news, but it's not like the bride or the child of God is, is looking at things. And this generation not passed till all these things be fulfilled. Now, I didn't 
because he talks about in the preceding verse about concerning his coming, how the Lord will come, uh, the, he- the heavens will, uh, will depart and so forth, and uh, the signs of the, uh, the moon turned to blood and all those things. They, there is a generation that's going to see that, but it's not the bride that's going to be seeing that part of it. In Luke, and he spake a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees... Now, the fig tree is the nation of Israel. It's after World War II. And not all the trees came out in 1948. Other nations became, other countries that were occupied by by being colonized got their freedom later on. And you can go on Google and see the, the time frame when each country became a free nation or declared themselves as a nation. So that happens over a space of time, but Israel marks the time as being 1948. Now, again, see, he says here, now when they shoot forth, not the bud, but the branch is shooting forth, you see and know that of your own selves that summer is nigh at hand. So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, ye know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Now, Luke doesn't use the doors, but he's talking about the kingdom of God's at the hand. And that's not for the sinner. That's for the bride. How many can catch the point of time that that's just transpiring now? And then he goes against, now he does in the the third verse 32, it summarized that generation. Now he's talking about that we'll see everything being fulfilled. That's your sinners. You and I are not going to see everything fulfilled because we will be in glory. We will not see the week of Daniel. We will not see what's happening in the land of Israel in the first three and a half years and the last three and a half. Now the day of the Lord we will see because we're coming with it with Him. All right. So I, I don't. To me, that sort of like opens up a little bit more relevant understanding of where we're looking at right now, because a, a preacher can take well, it means this, and take one part, it means that. But it all boils down is how do you see? It's not see with your eyes of a live event. And don't mean you have to see that live event while it is transpiring at that moment. But that generation will have access to see it. Just like what I mentioned earlier in Revelation chapter 11 verse 9. When those two prophets are killed, not everybody's going to cram in Jerusalem waiting for the event to take place. And they're not all going to see it on that day and that moment. Some will see it the next day. Somebody might have been sleeping while that's taking place here uh, 24 hours, let's say, around the world where, where it's 12 hours later. All right. Now, there is another scripture. And when we talk about the last season or the last decade... You can't clump in with the definition of decades, times and seasons, or or centuries and decades, with the one in Revelation chapter 6, verse 11. Because it talks about a little season, right? Well, from World World War II to the actual when the Jews are actually killed in the middle of the week, the other Jews are. It's, it's more than a decade. It's been five or six decades gone by since then. So it can't be a, a little season. But the thing to remember when we're looking at this scripture is this. And white robes were given unto every one of them. Those that died in World War II under Hitler's scourge of the Jews. Yes, that's where they died. We got that in history. That's no problem there. But when you're reading this scripture, 
It says they were given white robes. They don't have the white robes when they were in the concentration camp. They are now in glory. And it is in glory that that they receive the white robes that they're told they have to wait a little season. Now here in the natural world, on earth as we look at time, sometimes you've got to illustrate Yes, here, the time and the seasons, the times or the, the time frame that goes on is within what we all know to understand that there's seven days to a week and 24 hours to a day and, and so forth. All these things take place and then we know a decade's 10 years and a century is 100 years. But up in the spirit world, does time exist? Does it transpire the same rate as here? I'm going to say something that I I don't want to confuse you with it, but just to start looking a little bit. Now the scripture says, And white robes were given unto every one of them. So they're not on the earth, they're up in glory. And it was said unto them, where? In glory, that they should rest yet a little season. Now that season is related to the spiritual world time frame. Until their fellow servants, also their brethren, should be killed as they were. Now, there is another scripture, I didn't put it up here, but uh, I'm sure you're familiar with it. In, when the millennium starts, it's going to be a thousand years, but at the end, Satan's going to be let loose to test the, the people on the earth. And he was let loose for a little season. That is of the same time frame as these here with the white robes. So don't get that little season time frame to, as your measurement as it is concerning the natural living people that's on the earth. What is time? Well, it's something we, 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 we count. Yes, but what, what constitute time? Because we're getting at basic things. Now, we, I don't want to get into complicated things, just simple thoughts. Before the world was ever created, the universe, nothing exists, nothing moved, Time was meaningless. But the minute God created something, and if you have something go from one place to the other, then it's not instantaneous as existing all the time. It takes time. So time started when things became in motion. Right? You travel to church, it took some time for you to go from A to B. Or the universe from, from the day it was created to now, that took time. We know that is in motion, so time is involved. Now the other question is, in the spirit world, is time involved also? Angels move. Gabriel took three weeks to come to Daniel. So therefore, in the spirit world, yes, they are affected by time also. But is it the same time as we have? Well, we have a little indication in this manner. When God says, well, one day is as a thousand years, then it is not really... Now, that's for God's perspective, if you want to. So it's not related to, because once he created the universe... See, one one day is as a thousand years with the Lord. That's after he created the worlds, the universe. That was not applicable before. All right? Are we following? Now, here's something I'm going to throw you. Now, we, we live on this earth... And we are affected by certain times. 
And we look at God's up there. Or, or, or the saints are up around about us. Right? But I have news for you. Because we just look at it in the terms, I'm on the earth. We're not worrying about motion or anything like that. If someone is in the spirit world, they're just above us here somewhere. The spirit world is there. But, the, pl- the planets, Earth moves at 67,000 miles per hour. So if it's just heaven just being there, and we move 67,000 miles an hour away, where's your heaven? Oh, well, I never thought about that. Well, you don't need to think about it. The only reason I'm bringing that in is it's in this manner. And to, and to really to, to drive the point home, the sun moves at 283,000 miles an hour going in the Milky Way. So are we moving away from the spirit realm where we thought it was? Oh, I, uh, what's going on, Brother Fred? Simple. No, I don't have the answer what the time frame is. But the fact that when Jesus comes and heaven's opened up and he comes in his physical second coming, he's above Jerusalem. He's not a billion miles away trying to reach here to catch up with the earth. So that tells me that the spirit world is also in motion. Related to a time frame, but not necessarily how we measure time here. Now that's as far as I want to go, because otherwise you get into too many technical things. We don't need to know the technical thing. The only reason I'm bringing it out is there is time passes by in the spirit world. Because when you look at the book of Revelation that the servant's bringing things in. That's related to time, isn't it? Well, praise the Lord. I just thought I'd bring some of those things in. Does this destroy what has been already been revealed, brought forth? No. It gives us a deeper appreciation. And again, I, the reason I brought some of these things is because when it, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 or in Revelation chapter 8 verse 9 that they shall see it's related to time. But these, to see means it, you have to actually visually see it. It don't mean at that moment. Uh, come Thursday, uh, the next Bible study we have if you got your, I'm sure you probably have questions. But I, I tr- try to put it as simple as simple as can be. That as the earth moves in the natural world, the spirit world is associated with it, is also moving with it. But its time frame, may, we can't say, well, oh, it's the same thing as on the earth. Not necessarily. So therefore, getting back to that they was told in heaven to wait a little season doesn't mean a little decade. Because that, because if we never looked at it, then here's a little season, and then here's a decade here, and we can never resolve it, and never understand it, and so therefore the revelation can't be settled. One is related to time frame in the spirit world, while the other one is related to time frame on the earth. Now when you start looking at Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter uh, 21, is it, was it? Yeah, Luke chapter 21. When he says, see, it's really the time here. I hope we, as much as I, and then my voice, my, my throat's starting to tell me it's time to, to stop there, so. 
But uh, the Lord knows. It's not a deep message. But a little bit opening up on the nuggets of the Word of God helps us bring us closer to the time frame we're looking at. As God is coming on ground and opening up a little bit more understanding, and that's why we're in the Eagle Age, that's why the carcass is still underway, And those that would want to say, well, Brother Jackson didn't say it and we're, because what you're saying is not part of the carcass, be careful. Yeah. The carcass will go on as the Apostle of the Age said, it'll go on till that seventh seal is open. It has not stopped in 2005. How many, I don't know what you, but I, the Lord feeds you. <laughs> Fresh revelation brings life. Yes, there's life in the, in the things Jesus said and the things the apostles said. Well, once you've heard it a hundred times, it's still good and applicable. Don't ever forget that. It's always applicable. But it's not like fresh meat. It was fresh in the time that it was being delivered. Surely God has some fresh meat in this hour. Just like Israel is moving forward, so is this little bride moving forward in revelatory understanding. Little nuggets here at a time, a little bit here, a little bit there. Praise the Lord. Well... All right. Uh, yeah, I better. Fire? Well, I don't want to go too far and put too much uh, on the plate. I mean, I can only see as things opened up. And uh, when we're talking about events that have taken place in. St- I, my eyes fell on the scripture concerning the one in, in Revelation chapter 11, verse 9. Uh, not everybody's going to see it at that moment, at that, that time. But Jesus was not implying you have to physically see it when the physical event's happening. That would be a wrong interpretation because otherwise I'd have to say, Jesus, uh, strike out p- towns, strike out nations. Not everybody's going to be in Jerusalem to see that event. So... Anyway, even Brother Jackson said, by the means of television, that's why people are going to see it. But all I'm bringing out is when Jesus says concerning the bride that goes up to the doors or to the, 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 uh, the week of Daniel before it starts, uh, going up in the rapture before the week, around the week starts, then we will see those things, but we didn't necessarily have to be there or knew about it while we were young till the Lord picked us up anyway. But if we're a child of God, we, we, you, he will acquaint you, and that will be come across that you've seen these things. Now, some might not have seen certain things even yet, if you're just new to the Lord. But it's there. And God can bring it across your path. That doesn't mean you have to see it to be a historian, to write every detail, to know everything. It's just that you're a witness of those events. That's what he's saying. Well... Are you happy? Okay, well, praise the Lord. And be careful on the way home uh, if you didn't bring your skates. So, now it's just one of those events. It's rare that uh, we have it that way. The weather's changing, so usually we get our first snowfall in, in mid-November, but now we've only had it just lately, so. Let's just stand at this time. I think we'll just uh, dismiss us this time because I realize there's a lot of activities and families, uh, things going on, and so, amen. Uh, Brother Ray, if you would dismiss us in a word of prayer this morning. Thank you for your goodness to us. We just pray that you would dismiss us with your blessing. Be with each one. Give us traveling mercies, especially today. Dismiss us now with your blessing in the name of Jesus Christ we pray.
Amen. Amen. Lord bless each one.